All right, so if this was a slide, you would see next week on your quiz. The first question is, there's an artery and a vein on here. Which one is which? This one is which one? Artery. Artery. That's right. How did you know? Because the artery has to push the sodium. Very good. So remember, lecture arteries are thicker wall because they have pressure, right? So pressure thicker wall like a fire hose versus a garden hose. They're usually more rounded, but don't you know? That's not always a rule, right? So the main thing you want to look for is the thickness. Veins are usually thinner. There's less pressure. They tend to be more kind of a blobby shape, not a round shape, not always. So you want to just your first question is that an artery to vein. So the arteries on the left, veins on the right. So look for look for layers. You know the size of the layers, basically. Right, let's try. I won't show you which one it is. Oh, I got you right now. This is a close-up. So there's something on the right, something on the left. The one on the right. Artery. artery. Ah! How'd you know? Thick wall. Thicker than that. Vein over here, artery over there, right? So that's the clue you're looking for, is thickness of that layer. Um, that's, that's the big question. So once you know it's an artery or a vein, then you have to go back and name the layers within those layers, basically. So if you look at your magic sheet, there's tunicas, just like the eyeball had tunics. So you have tunicas. So the easiest way to do it is start where the blood is on the inside, which is also called the lumen. It's white. And work your way this way. Look for color changes. For example, can everyone see there's a little red line about here? Okay. That would be the innermost tunic or the tunica interna or tunica intima. Either way is fine. I learned intima. So that's what tends to be what I use. But intimate or close. All right, that's the one closest to the blood, or the internal. Only in arteries. Actually, these ones have it too. It's just really right, it's right here. That's the intima there. So what do you call the layer from here to here? Media. Tunica media, meaning middle. So the middle layer. Then what would you call from about here to about there? Externa, or also called the adventitia. So you have three layers, you have an interna, a media, and an externa. Literally inside, middle, and outside. And that's true for the veins, there's just fewer of it. So interna, smaller media, and there's an externa. So you go from the inside out, intima, media, and ex externa. If you know the layers, then you're supposed to memorize the tissues you find there. So inside your interna, in here, what tissue would be on a surface of a blood vessel? Epithelium, but because it's in your blood vessels, we call it endothelium. It's the same, same rule, just different place. Then you remember you had a basal lamina, which glued it on, which you really can't discern there. Right? So that's my intern. What's my media made out of? Smooth muscle. How do we know it has to be smooth muscle? Because it's involuntary, right? So smooth muscle, visceral muscle, and there's some elastic fiber. What is my externa made out of? Areolar. Areolar connected tissue, some fibrous connected tissue. So you're supposed to know on a slide, artery versus vein, tunica, and then within the tunica, the layers within it. So you memorize the bottom of 28, that's what you're going to do. So it's pretty simple histology as long as you catch on to which one is which. So I'm going to randomly put one up here, because I can. It gets harder when there's only one. I'm going to give you just one. Artery. I hear voices for arteries. Artery. That is true. It's an artery. And how'd you know? A thick wall. Yeah, again, that media, which is the middle, is really, really thick. It's usually more round, not always, but fire hose is the analogy you want to use. Nice and round. So someone point out they roll them up. All right, so let's try. No, it's not how that works, sorry. Name it. Claim it. Vane. Vane. How'd you know? Thinner wall, not as round, though it can be. It's more of a blob, oblong kind of shape. What's the stuff that's kind of hanging out in the middle? Uh, this would be the blood cells here. These are blood cells. I'm not... I, who knows, right? These are blood cells that are clotted up over here. I don't know what some stain. Goop, that's a good science word. So this one's unhealthy, right? Yeah, it's okay. Let's try this one. Yes. You have a lot of things on the slide. It makes it a little bit harder. Artery. Where's the artery? On the right. 
big thing left, right by your left face. Left line. This one? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We say, well, it's not perfectly round. Well, it's not always perfectly round. But the trick is, it's rounder than this thing. And it's thicker. There's that media. This thing over here would be the veins. Less round, not as, not as thick. There's some other. These are nerves, by the way, up here. Okay. But you get the idea. So your first goal, artery versus vein. And once you know that, they have the same layers, just different thicknesses. It's a pretty simple slide. That's the only slide Phoenix. for next week, is that. So you can just do that over and over and over. Yeah. Let me see if I have one more to try. Oh, the chain. <laughs> this one is the other vessel you have to know, just to understand it. What is this little teeny tiny blood vessel that you actually can't see anything with? Where exchange happens. That's a capillary. So capillary you would not see under most of the slides. But capillary is just one cell thick in capillary. Darn it. Too much so, light. So yeah, all the they have one. is an endothelium. They're one layer. There's nothing else in them. There's no muscle. Make sense? All right. So if you keep that in mind, there is a model to help you with the slides. That is the intertwined trees of love. Can you get here. that one? Okay, bring it on up to the front since you're all putting cameras at me. At some point in your college career, you want to take a picture of this. Okay. I don't think you need it anymore. Right. Um, Especially with it open. So, this represents two different kinds of blood vessels. So we have the big guy in the middle, we have these two. The big one in the middle is a what? Artery. Artery. How did you know? Thick wall. Thicker. You, and what's really nice, if you turn it this way, you can tell right there wow. there's a round and not round, thick and thin, right? That's the trick you want. So, but you can see the, you can see the tunicas, you can see the tissues. There's another little trick. What are these? Valves. 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 Who has valves? Veins have valves because oh. of lower pressure. So this model <laughs> matches the slide you saw in JDOC. So you do want to at least take a look at this and label the tunicas as well. Mm -hmm. You okay in the intertwined trees of love? All right, yeah. so give that a look. Okay, the rest of your lab is basically pure name it, claim it on the blood vessel. So let me walk you through briefly. You're, this is just pure plug and chug. There's nothing I can tell you up here that's magical. Make it easier. There are some things that you're supposed to know for each artery and vein on this list that never ends for four pages. Okay? The things you're supposed to know I could ask you of are, is for this week's quiz, you are required to write artery or vein, or A or B. Because that is one thing you're trying to figure out is if you know the difference anatomically between them. You're all supposed to know if it's paired or unpaired. What that means in English, are there two of them, a right and a left, or is there just one of them? So if there's two of them, that's the way you think it is. There's a right and a left. But some of them, there's only one. So for example, your brachiocephalic artery, there's only one of them. It's on the right side of your body, but there's only one. So that one you'd say is unpaired. Right? The other thing you're supposed to know in your head is if there's an artery or vein with the same name. So if there's a brachial artery, is there also a brachial vein? The answer is yes. Right? So you, but if you go to a, I think one that doesn't matter. A cephalic vein, there is no cephalic artery. So as you're going through this list, you want to, the easiest way is to pay attention to the exceptions. Everything on this list will probably be paired and with a matching vein. There's only a handful of them that would not be paired and not match. So you probably want to pay more attention to the exceptions and not, just remember everyone else is too even. The other, this is kind of a general rule of thumb. If the artery and vein are in the same place on the model, they're usually the same name because they lie next to each other. So I'll show you in a, in a weird sort of way. Let's use this guy. Okay. So on this model, just to vaguely, this is not always a rule, but it matches up. If you look in the leg here, you'll see there's a red and a blue thing right next to each other. That means they're going to have the same name in general. So what would you call something in your thigh? Femoral. Femoral. femoral, right? So the red one would be your femoral artery, your blue one would be the femoral vein. So in general, if you get stuck on a quiz, if they're right next to each other, they're going to pretty much be the same name most of the time. Here's something, though, that only has a blue, it's not, there's no red. That means it's going to be a different name than the arteries, because it's not next to or congruent with. So if you see something that's off by itself, usually it's going to be the ones that doesn't have a pair or partner. Make sense? The other quick rule on a quiz is just do go back to 231. 
What do you call something in your thigh? Femur, femoral. What do you call something in your armpit? An axillary. So if you're stuck, just name the body part from 231. It's probably right. Because almost all these words, other than a few of them, are the names you learn in 231. Is there an iliac? Uh, Iliac, near your hip, right? Radial would be on my thumb side. So, I mean, you just basically guess on some of these. So what is that one that's just singular? This is the great saphenous vein. So it's a vein. It does not have a partner artery, and it's a saphenous. But there are two. Where's the saphenous? Saphenous comes up your leg, and it's an additional vein to drain your leg. So the saphenous. So what you want to do on this one is, unfortunately, every board boy is different in how they're laid out. The mini men are all different. I wish I had some magic. But basically, you want to plug and chug as many of these as you can just by pointing and naming. All right? So a couple um, general things to pay attention to. Pay attention to the neck because they're named differently. Carotids versus jugulars. So that they have different, the same place but different names. Right? That's one of those places people catch you. The other thing to pay attention to is common is different than internal external. Anyone know what common means in blood vessels? Something that's shared? Shared or together. So you common and then you split. So a common carotid is in your neck. As it splits at your head, it becomes an internal and an external. So like a fork in the road. So you want to be careful of those that split because there's a different name before and after the split. So you got to be careful it's common or something else. You have a common iliac. You have an internal external iliac because it splits. Mm. So be careful of that word in front, right, if it's common or not. Otherwise, you're just basically going to sit here and cry for the next, you know, however long to memorize <laughs> all these blood vessels. You're also supposed to know the blood pressure stuff, which you can do. If you've never done blood pressure, I can help you do it. If you know how to do it, fine. You're supposed to know all the vocabulary about blood pressure, about the systolic, diastolic, dichrotic notches, all that fun stuff. So that's a lot of reading. There's not a lot of things I can ask you other than how to do a blood pressure. Make sense? Yes, and then two weeks from now is your lab exam. So that means next week is your last open lab of the term, officially. So be advised, this will all come back again in two You're weeks. You're so pleased. <laughs> yes, everything on the order. So, we have some slides, got some models. Walk around some shoes. And we are done. Use your time wisely. Thank you. Made by the baby. So it's a reference to the baby's heart, how you name this. So here you have blue vessels coming from the baby to mom to, mom to get air. So they're deoxygenated, but they're going away from the baby's body to the placenta. So they would be what? They're going to be away from the baby. is going to be... I didn't have my lipstick on. Here, hold on. <laughs> okay, and we call these your umbilical arteries. So you have two umbilical arteries, there's two blues in there. So the lowest or two. Right, because your mom is breathing for you, so mom's over here. But in reference to the baby, these are arteries. Okay. You get oxygen, and then you turn red, so oxygenated. And you come back on one big red tube back to heart. That would be the umbilical vein. Which has the highest oxygen. Right, so it's in reference to the baby's heart. So two away artery, one back vein. And then you have to get that vein to plumb in the baby. So there's a tube from your belly button through your liver, which is right here, ah, through your liver to the vena cava. Baby's vena cava. Baby's vena cava. Well, that's carrying red blood, oxygenated blood, but it's a vein because it's coming back to the heart. So that's a ductus venosus, reducting the vein into the vena cava. Okay. You then go up to box, and then you go through that hole you learned, right there. You go through your foramen ovale. Now you're on the left side. You go through the aorta, and then on around. Eventually, you get sent to the umbilical cord. Turn red. Go in. Duct to the vein. Back up to the heart. Get sent to the left. Back to the body. You're bypassing the lungs because you're not breathing. You're a mom. What do you need to breathe for? So it's going straight from in the vena cava to the right atrium and straight over to the yes. left? Yes, it's supposed to. That's what, the, that's okay. what that hole is supposed from to do. Because right the there's no point sending it to your lungs. Your lungs won't do anything for it anyway. Atrium. And then there's a bypass called the ductus arterial. If any blood is in the pulmonary circuit, 
then it bypasses the lungs and ends back up in the order through that ductus arteriosus. Oh, that was on our other list. Yes, yeah, that's the ligamentum arteriosum. Okay. So there's two that's bypasses. There's one on the liver where the umbilical comes in. There's one on the heart where the pulmonary goes over. Goes straight back right. to the aorta. Right, because you don't need lungs. So you're sending everything to the left side. But that's the fetal circulation. What's different is this is a lung in a baby. So this is the same as pulmonary system. We call umbilical arteries and umbilical vein, and there's three instead of two. The ductus venosus is the vein that goes it's from through the belly, the belly button, button to the liver, liver. To, to vena cava, to duct in the vein. So when they snip this cord, that all goes away. Liver, vena cava. So it's the same, the same wiring and plumbing as, as an adult. The only thing that's different is your lungs now out here. Mom's your lungs. Mom's your lungs. Okay. But everything's related in the yeah. same. Arteries are away. Veins too. Yeah. Yeah. The uterus is your life. Oh, that's the uterus. Well, placenta in the uterus. Okay. Yep. We'll learn that next term we do placenta aids. Babies are fun. Okay. I'm good. Like this one, all the way. So that way you put circle flex. The most important place you want to get a close up is right here. That big thing is called your celiac trunk. It's a big pipe servicing basically all your intestines. So from that, you have arteries, the red ones that branch to different organs. Like this one comes over to my spleen, so that'd be the splenic. This one goes to my stomach, so gastric, and then there's some that you can't see that branch off to my intestines, which would be the mesenterics, which would be like these here. So your celiac trunk would service the spleen, the stomach, the liver, the intestines. So that's a good celiac trunk. If you go down your list, basically there's gastrics, splenic, hepatic, which would be the liver. So all the red vessels that service in here, so the easy way to learn it is to learn the, the, or, the name of the vessels and figure out what organ they go to. Hepatic would be liver, mesenteric would be mesenteric. The renals come off slightly lower to be for your kidneys. But that's the best celiac trunk in town, is that one. So, that's, so celiac branches to all these other ones. He's a good one. The rest of it, yeah, not so good. He's got your, your common iliacs, then it splits into internal here, external there, which then become femoral when you pop out in the thigh. So you can follow his down celiac trunk, splenic, to be hepatic, to be a gastric, a mesenteric, common iliacs, internal iliacs, external iliacs, femorals, on down the line. So are you supposed to know that one? I don't think you're supposed to know that one. Gnadal, gnadal is not shown. I think that's all you can do on that guy. But going up, going out, going down. So we'll do the ups first. So okay. the best way to study this is start in the heart, all right? And then you're going to go up, so ascending aorta, and then be an arch, so arch. And then it varies by which side of the head I'm going to go to, but I'm going to go up to your left side. So I'm going to go up this tube here, which is the common carotid, because it's one in my neck. And then here, I'm going to start splitting. So you can't see it well, but... The carotid would go into my skull, so internal carotid, and half it would come out here, which would be external carotid, so it splits. So would that be internal? Yeah, and this model's hard, I can't see, I'm pretty sure that is the internal, because it doesn't keep going. But the, the guy on wheels, he actually will show the connection. So I did up, ascending, arch, common carotid, internal, external carotid. <coughs> then once I'm at your head, basically, I start changing the name based on where I go. So... You have one here, which is on the side of your head. Temporal. Temporal or superficial temporal will be formal name, because on the side of my temples. Then you're going to go under the jaw. So that's going to be your maxilla. Mm -hmm. And then you come up kind of the face, right? Mm -hmm. So basically, every time it turned or split, you give it a new name. So now if I want to come down from my head, it's going to be the same superficial temporal vein, maxillary vein, so now I use jugular because one of those that has a different name. So I have my jugulars come down right here. Okay. You said the occipital, right? The occipital, the occipital will be, they don't show up connecting here, but it's right here. Okay. Right. So now let's pretend we go to an arm. Ascending, arch, 
Now I'm going to go up this way. So I'm in your clavicle, but I'm below it. So how do you say below your clavicle? Subclavicular. The trick is, when I go through your armpit, I'm magically now, what? Axillary. Brachial. Gets me here. And then I have to remember, okay, this is my pinky side would be ulnar. Thumb side would be radial. Right? So I'm just going to use the same biology I had before. When I get down to my palm, that's going to be my superficial palmer. And then what do you call fingers? Well, those digital. are digits. So there should be a digital on there. Yes, there is. Right? You can't see the subscapular on this model, but it'd be below your scapula on the back of the green board. So that one's not shown. But basically, you just name the parts from 231, subclavian, axillary, brachial. You kind of get your way down there. And then going back would be basically the same naming. So I have a radial vein, the ulnar vein, brachial vein, which they cut here, axillary and then brachiocephalic and subclavian and all that. Now the problem with veins is there's extra ones that aren't on the arteries. So if you go to your vein sheet, you'll notice that there's a few extra words that aren't on the artery side. So if you go down, you will see basilic and cephalic. This is called your ABC rule. So those are extra veins in your arm that you don't have as an artery. So the trick is that basalic means bottom, cephalic means towards your head. So this blue one here, which goes above your arm like that, that's your cephalic, because it's closer to my head to some drunk Roman one day. The one down here, which is at the bottom of the arm, is your basilic, because your brachial was in the middle of those three. So you have, here's two veins that don't match an artery. You don't have a cephalic artery, but you have a cephalic vein, a basilic vein, next to my brachial vein. So that's one of those weird ones where there's an extra plumbing in the vein side. But otherwise, the rest of it would be the same. All right, All right so now we got to go this way. So I go up an arch. Now I'm going to descend behind my heart. And then you can't see it, but the, the aorta comes down like that, called thoracic, in my chest. Then pops out abdominal here. So now I'm just going to do the legs, and I'll go back up and do the stuff. So I do my legs. I'm coming down my abdominal aorta. I'm now going to split here near my hips. So well, that's my ilium. So that's my iliac. Which one is it? It's one of them before it splits. That's common. I then split. So I have an internal, which is the 31. I have an external, which keeps going. The minute I pop out of my hips, I'm now magically ephemeral because I'm in my thigh. That would go down my thigh, which I show kind of here and here. I'm going to go behind your knee. So what was behind the knee in 231? Pop Popliteal. Then I'm going to basically end up down in your shin. So if you go back in here, I have an anterior tibial and a fibular. So anterior tibial means front of shin. That's going to be this one. And, and fibular was the back, kind of the side of it, which is back here. You can't see it real well, the way they show it. And then I'm going to end up somewhere on my foot, dorsalis pedis, right? Metatarsals. So it's the same naming game as 231. And going back would be the same naming. The only difference is you have an additional vein here that doesn't have an artery. That would be the saphenous. That's the one that's an extra. Right. The same thing. External iliac, internal iliac, common iliac, vein, vena cava, nut. So if you can get there and just reverse your course, you'd have the veins going backwards. Do you have saphenous on there? Is there should be saphenous on this one. Should be on there. Great saphenous. There it is, great saphenous. Now the harder one is the guts, because they come out, so if you come down, right here, this big lump is the, is the uh, celiac trunk. If you go to your artery page, there's a celiac trunk, which in English means a bunch of, a bunch of plumbing for your guts. So that's my celiac trunk. That services pretty much everything in the abdomen. So then you have to name where it goes. So this red one here, number 25, it's going from my celiac trunk to my spleen. So how would you say that? I would just say artery to spleen. Spleniac. Spleniac or splenic, sure. It's also going to my liver. How would you say liver artery? Hepatic. Hepatic. It would also go to my stomach. How would you say stomach artery? Gastric. Gastric. It would also go to my intestines, which would be mesenteric. So that little part there is going to split and go to everything. And depending on which board you're on, varies how it looks. So I can see the splenic fine. I can see the hepatic fine. I know from my experience that this is the superior mesenteric, this is the inferior mesenteric, but you can't see the intestines to know that. You just have to memorize that. And this is the gastric here. These ones go to my kidneys, 
How do you say kidney in the real world? Kidney? Renal. <laughs> and these two would go to my gonads, either male or female. So how do you say going to gonads? You say gonadal. And all those are coming out of... The celiac trunk does the first ones. The renals and gonadals are separate. But in the guts, just name the organ and make it sound doctory. Liver tube hepatic. Spleen tube splenic. Kidney tube renal. What was, yeah. was the gonadal one? Uh, Grenadal, these two. And they don't show the veins in that one. So a good way to study is like you're doing, is go, try to go in your head from here to here. Make the route there and make the route back, because there are some differences. If I go to my, my left side, I can go from my aorta to my subclave in and out. If I go to my right side, though, there's a brachiocephalic artery in the way. So if I go to my right arm, I have to go aorta to brachiocephalic, that's the jumper to get to over to here, which is the subclavius. That's one of those where there's not a pair. You have one brachiocephalic artery on the right side. You have no brachiocephalic artery on the left, but you have two brachiocephalic veins, though, one on each side. So you're not mm -hmm. symmetric mm -hmm. there. And that's, and that's really one of the few places you're going to have a right and left Why difference. Why are they called the cum carotids if they're because they split, separate? Because they split at your head. So they're common until they get to your skull, and then they split. So everything's common is before, before it splits. Common iliac is before it splits in the thigh or the hip. Common carat is before it splits in your skull. They just, that's just the rule they always did, like rivers. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So, and then what makes this worse is the veins in the gut look different than the arteries they're named with. So here's a splenic vein, I can see that. Here's a hepatic vein, I can see that. But this is a hepatic portal vein. That doesn't look like that one, but it's named differently. These are the mesenteric veins down here. So some of the veins are named differently in the guts compared to. But it depends on which board you have. That's all the magic I can tell you other than just pure plug and chug point and name. Where was the? Um... The azygos, those are veins in your chest, and they're not on the board boys. So they would be on man with wheels if you took his chest off. They're behind all this, so you'd have to take all this out to find those in the back. So I you'll usually be don't using, ask You'll this. be using these boards yes. and the man to yes. point your pointers on? Yes. So if you can't see it on here, then... Then you wouldn't have to learn on that. So but we will on the other, right? If I can find them on the other easily, Just you. Just you. Just you. Some of the ones that you can't see, I have been known to use a picture and like, you know, because I can't see it. But the I tend to avoid those if I... The but it... Yes. Thanks. If, Thanks for that vote of confidence. If you're that's going, I haven't graded your test yet. I wonder what that score is going to be like. If you're going to use that, you, you want, want me to go through it? Yeah, sure, yeah absolutely. Can absolutely. I don't know, but I'm going to get them to. Um, probably not tomorrow. I've got an all day class. I'm learning how to do IDs. <laughs> It's it's like <laughs> Okay. Like we're going. No. Yeah, I'm just pushing you out of the way. It's okay. That's okay. You can see Is this what a rock star me? feels like? Yeah. Not the drugs and the sex and the rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> Not the liver damage. Hmm? All right. So let's go through this one since I was asking questions. <laughs> All right, so what I would do on this model is I'd look at it this way. Let me get out of your way. And I would say, okay, glass, what is this one? You'd say that's a artery because it's rounder, it's thicker. This one's a vein, not as round, not as thick. So if I were looking at this in profile, I'd say, okay, there's a, a layer to this white line here. There's the red layer and this pinky layer. So I have my tunica intima or interna would be the innermost, the media would be the meat, and then the externa or adventitia would be the outermost. I have my three layers. So then if I open that up, unembrace. I see the same game. So I see my Artery here, my veins, let's do the arteries. So I'm touching the yellow, that's going to be the endothelium of the tunica intima, it's the innermost of the innermost. And then it's going to have a basal lamina, it's connected tissue right there, which is the color you see here. The red is going to be the smooth muscle of the tunica media, because that's the meat of the, of the vessel, which you can see here. 
And then out here is going to be the tunica externa. That would be the areolar and fibrous tissue of the areolar. I'm sorry, the tunica externa. Which is out here. But it would skew the... And then this would be the same thing for the vein, but thinner. So my intima is about the same, but my media is a lot thinner. And there's my adventitia or externa. And then I have my valves. And that's basically all you got to know on that one, oh, pretty cool. much. I think, is there something else on here I'm missing? Oh, can you see? I was, I was like, English mm, don't know this. Oh, there's one thing you're supposed to read about, which is elastic versus muscular. So a muscular artery has more muscle, obviously. An elastic artery has less muscle, but more of these fibers that make it stretch. So depending on which artery you're in, it can be more muscular or less muscular, but the trick is they're still better than the vein. So which arteries are elastic? In the ones that have the highest pressure. Okay, so they're going to be right close to the heart. Yeah, pretty much. So your aorta should be very stretchy. Mm -hmm. And then... Like the right coronary artery, that coronary artery? No, like the aorta. The aorta. Right, so they can act as a reserve in general. But they have a mixture. Every artery is going to be a mixture of muscle and elastic. So let's see. What That's about all femoral? That. Would that be muscular? Not the look. I don't... That doesn't ring a bell. It's a fairly big artery. It might be. I have to look that up. That's not something I keep in my head which one is where. Yeah, because of that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you get my slice? That's scary. That was scary. It's from Dexter. Everyone. Sure. Thank you. All right. So, again, I would, if it were me, I would study as though I'm going from the heart and going up or down in my head. So, I'm going to go up from my heart. I'm going to take this tube here, which is also over here, but you can't see it. That's going to go up my neck, which would be the what? What? Carotid. Common carotid artery. And this model shows very well the split. So right here, this blood vessel keeps going on the outside of my head, so that would be which carotid? It's on external. The outside, external. You notice this one branches and goes inside my skull and pops out in my head, in my brain, so that's going to be the internal carotid. So common to internal to external. Then these ones split some more. So here it pops up on my head, kind of like that. So what do you call that side of my head? It's superficial no, temporal. Hold it. Just, no, no, no. Because it's on the surface of my temples. It also goes, like this side, kind of under my, hi, you don't need a brain, under my jaw, maxillary, and then climbs up my face, so facial. So you're basically doing just naming the body part. What else in there? Occipital is just shown kind of like this. They don't show it connecting, but that's my occipital. This is in the back of my head. Then you have to get down again. So if you get down, the only thing you have to remember is it's jugulars, not carotid. So, and these models don't show them very well. You notice there's not a lot of blue, but it does show one here. This would be my jugular vein coming down into my neck. So it doesn't show the other veins up in here, but they would be named the same, pretty much. So then I want to get to my arm. Right. You don't need long. So if we start here, ascending your order, arch. Do you want to go to the right arm or left arm? Pick one. Right. I heard left first. I heard so, left first too. That means I'm going to go up to my subclavian, which is, you can't see, but it curves under my clavicle. I'm going to turn here my axillary, and I'm going to go down my arm. As my. I'm going to go down as my brachial. And once I get to my elbow, I'm not going to change the names now because some of it's going to go to my pinky, ulnar, some are going to go to my thumb, radial. So just using the bones you learned before. Then coming back, there are none on this model to show you. So they're just the arteries. Yellows are the nerves. So that's what we learned. Now if I went to the right arm, I'd be one difference. I have my ascending aorta to my arch. But then I have to get to the right side of the body, so I have to do the brachiocephalic, it's a jumper, to my common carotid and also my subclavian. So then I'd go ar ascending arch brachiocephalic subclavian and then do the same route. So if I went to this side, I have no brachiocephalic. If I go to this side, I have a brachiocephalic. So there's a difference there between the right and the left side.
If I want to go down, let's do that. Go to you. Yeah. All right, so this represents where the, where the hanger is, is your celiac trunk. So this big pipe right here is representing the celiac trunk, which is all this plumbing here. The celiac trunk is going to go to my spleen, to my liver, to my stomach, and vice versa. So that would be all those hepatic, splenic, and this enteric arteries. But if I keep going, I'm in my abdominal aorta. Now I'm going to go here, which is my common iliacs, to my internal, external iliacs. And then once I branch out, now I'm in my femoral artery. On this model, yeah, they do show up. There's my popliteal. And then it pretty much peters out by the time I get down there with the tibula and fibula. Oh my God. And then there's no veins on this model to show coming back. Makes sense? That's pretty much all you can see with this guy, although he does show the iliacs once you get in the body cavity. Let's see, what else does this guy have that I'm trying to remember? Oh, yeah. He does have the thoracics. So these ones back here, along your ribs. So this one does show the thoracic and the rib cage. It's the only one that shows behind that. So this is one thing the board boys don't have, is that one. The vertebrals. Kind of. Kind of not to be something I put on test, but it's there. That's all you can see with that guy. <laughs>